What is going on guys? Welcome back to the OBR YouTube channel. In this week's top stocks to watch, we have a lot of very important tickers to go over. Some fundamental drivers that we need to be aware of in this upcoming week, as always, and the earnings in the S&P 500. So if you're new to this series, we go over what all of what I just said, and basically going over our favorite stocks that we're going to keep an eye on in this week that we, OBR Investing, the analysts at OBR Investing, may act on, and we want you to be aware of, so maybe you can act on them as well. If you're not familiar with whom I am, my name is Logan Silver. I've been a proprietary trader for many years. I've been a risk manager at a proprietary trading firm, and I now serve as a uh, currency and options analyst at OBR Investing. So without any further delay, let us get right into this week's top stocks to watch. So as you can see on screen now, we just have a little bit of news. And just a reminder, these are all in Eastern Standard Time. We are starting the week off Wednesday with OPEC meetings. Should be very, very important, especially considering some things we're going to cover in the technical analysis portion of this video in regards to oil. At 8.30 a.m., we also have the CPI numbers, the Consumer Price Index, and Core CPI numbers come in for the U.S. And on Thursday, we have our PPI numbers. So not too much news this week, just Thursday and Wednesday at 8.30 a.m. And if you're trading oil, be aware of Wednesday. But besides that, nothing else. And as you can see on screen right now is our earnings in the S&P 500 for this upcoming week. Heading over to our handy, handy charts, we're going to be looking at the S&P 500 index to start off. So on the S&P 500 index, we have been very, very vocal about how we think it is coming lower. We have some price targets that we've analyzed uh, in the prior videos, but we can quickly recap. I am expecting SPY to come down in the midterm to 395 to 391 and on the extended end all the way down to 373. These are our two levels of price targets. And uh, you know, while we may not hit them in the short term, I think that after a bit of a bearish market rally, we will see those price targets hit. And that is exactly what my thesis is going into this upcoming week. If we go to a higher time frame chart, you can see that our 410 low that we had, we were not able to close a candle beneath it on the S&P 500, on the 12 hour and on the daily. Uh, two rejections from that level, which could be referred to by some as a triple bottom. I'm going to refer to it as a respect of support. It, as you can see, price is very clearly respecting this support level at 410. On, again, on the higher time frame charts. And I do think that in that case, we will see an ABC move play out. I do see we have a five wave move to the downside. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, that is Elliott Wave Principle. We are having a bi-weekly call uploaded to this YouTube channel. It should be up either at the same time as this video or the day after. So be sure to watch that. If you don't know about Elliott Wave Theory, we went all over it, condensed a 300 page book into about an hour. So I Highly recommend checking it out. Very, very useful information. Regardless, I see a five wave move to the downside followed by a perhaps three wave corrective move. So we can quickly label that A, B, C. If we come up to this high at wave A's price extreme right here at 430, just about fill this gap that we had at 427, we can see a flat correction play out, which means we just come up to that level and come down. But it is obviously on the table that we come higher. Again, this is willing that on Monday, we do not just take out this low. If we break below 405, then in that case, I will be immediately once again bearish. We will have seen that this impulse wave is not yet over. Uh, but until that happens, I will expect a bearish market rally, a bit of a bounce from this level. Apple is playing out exactly how we thought it would. We thought it would come back down to this support line, which it did twice now and reject from that level. We then came higher, retested this resistance that I had us retesting, um, and now we are coming back down. So again, I think this is willing on SPY. I think if on Monday we take out that 405 level on SPY, we could see Apple immediately break. That will be a very bearish indicator if we do break this support line. I would look for a four hour candle close at the minimum. Perhaps we do a bounce, just like we were looking on SPY, and we come back up to this level once again for the third time, maybe even a little bit higher, and then come lower. But I am ultimately expecting us to break through this support zone, uh, potentially this week. QQQ, on the other hand, does not look nearly as bullish as SPY does. It looks very bearish because we are consist consistently making lower lows here, which does make me think that Apple will be dragged down because obviously Apple is a tech stock and will follow QQQ a little bit closer than SPY. Regardless, um, as you know from our last market forecast, top stocks to watch, whatever you want to call it, we had an ABC move play out here, ABC, a head and shoulders, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, and a reversal pattern, and we are making our way down 
to the take profit for that head and shoulders pattern in this five wave move. So it does appear to me that we are very much bearish on QQQ and we'll continue to move lower to this 296 level, 289 level. Tesla is consolidating. Uh, that's what it was pretty much towards the end of last week. Actually, all of last week, it seems that way. We were just bouncing between these two levels. And, you know, we are still doing that. So until we get a confident break higher, you know, above 955 or below 823, I will not be looking to take anything on Tesla. I think it's just consolidating right now. AMD hit our head and shoulders take profit at this level, 86.50, came up and is retesting the neckline of our head and shoulders that we can see here. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Again, a reversal pattern, just like we saw on QQQ. So the question now is, will AMD lead the charge and break back above the neckline, or will it reject the neckline and come lower? I'm not sure. I'm leaning bearish, but we'll have to see. And here comes into the charts of the week, the thesis of the week, whatever you'd like to refer to it as. But that is oil. I, um, there's a lot of a lot of fundamental drivers with oil right now. So the main stocks I'm looking at are Gush, Oxy, and Exxon. Right now, I am in Exxon. I, I think Exxon looks the best. But as you can see here, we had a very clear ABC corrective move play out on uh, WTI, which is West Texas Intermediate Crude Oil Cash. So it is a direct representation of oil. And we are now, as you can see, in a pretty clear looking five wave move. We just on Friday got a daily candle close above this prior resistance. So we indeed made a new high. And it seems that we are uh, going to continue the trend higher. So I'm very bullish on oil. I'm going to be interested to see what the OPEC meetings have to say on Wednesday. But keep your eye out on oil correlated stocks. Exxon. Exxon has a great chart. Exxon just broke um, out of this wedge that we had, retested it right here, and is off to the races. Uh, Gush is going to be another chart that you can keep an eye on for oil to move higher. Not performing as well as Exxon. I went with Exxon because it has better technicals and is usually a market leader in the energy space. So but these will definitely correlate. I'm just not sure if they will correlate as well as Exxon. Oxy seems to be doing even better than Exxon, making new highs as well. Um, Oxy looks very, very nice. So keep an eye on oil related stocks. And uh, I think those will be doing very, very well this week. Again, guys, you know I speak fast, that's just me. I try to relay this information to you as fast as possible because hopefully you can spend more time enjoying your weekend and getting ready for this upcoming week. So we really, really hope you guys enjoyed. We really hope you pulled some value out of this video. And we hope that you can go into this week a little bit more knowledgeable than the last. As always, on behalf of everybody at OBR Investing, we wish you the very best of luck and happy trading. We will see you in the next video.